Hi, welcome back everyone. Today let us see about osteoid osteoma, what we need to know, what are the classification, what are the types of osteoid osteoma, what is the different variants which are present. So let us see what is the investigation of choice. So there are few salient features which we need to know about osteoid osteoma. Let us see with classic example. This is a young male who presented with thigh pain which has worsening pain in the night. So this is very very classic presentation of an osteoid osteoma. You can see the AP radiograph of left femur you can see and the significant finding what we are seeing is the significant thickening of cortex which is smooth solid it doesn't look like an aggressive lesion. So let us see the next imaging modality CT. So coming to CT you can see the extensive solid periaster and reactive bone thickening along the lateral aspect of the mid, mid shaft of the femur and in the axial sections you can see the left femur extensive thickening and a central lytic nidus and you can see some amount of mineralized cortex within the lesion within the nidus. So this is a very classic and typical appearance of osteoid osteoma and adjacent bone and no other lesions in the same long bone. Coming to MRI, uh, the important point to remember is MRI doesn't play a major role when compared to CT because the nidus is better directed on CT than on MR. So you can see the coronal T2 varied image, you can see the hyper intense nidus and you can see small hypo intense area within the nidus and the axial sections you can see the marrow edema in the medullary cavity and you can see the thick and periosteum surrounding soft tissue edema and the nidus and small mineralized cortex within the nidus the similar axial MRI at the same level so this is a classic picture and classic clinical presentation and imaging features of osteoid osteoma so coming to the classification system osteoid osteoma cases classification based on location is a normal bone you can see the subperiosteal location you can see the cortex is intact and it is located in the subperiosteal region subperiosteal osteoid osteoma cortical that is intracortical like similar to our case our case is an intracortical osteoid osteoma and you can see endosteal endosteal type and you can see a medullary and another important variant of osteoid osteoma which is very rare the, based on the location is the intra-articular osteoid osteoma. It is very important because uh, it does not produce much of periosteal reaction because of absence of inner cambium layer in that region of intra-articular portion of a bone. So that is the reason we don't get much of reactive bone formation. So we should think or we should keep in mind whenever there, are, there is an intra-articular region, think of intra-articular osteoid osteoma as a last resort. So this is a graphic representation I would like to thank Ajay uh, for his excellent uh, depiction of the intracortical osteoid osteoma. You can see the nidus, you can see the mineralized cortex, central mineralization, you can see the cortical thickening adjacent, some amount of sclerosis extending towards the medullary cavity like which was classically presented in our case. So this is the, all these are the typical findings of osteoid osteoma. Coming to few important points. We should always remember in this era the ultrasound of musculoskeletum has been evolved much. So let us see the ultrasound features which x-ray I have already shown all the findings which are presented have been described all the various types based on the x-ray based on the location the lesion appears different. On USG the lesion can appear as it is a cortic most common location is the cortex based or intracortical location. The lesion appears as a hypoechoic lesion on ultrasound with post acoustic enhancement and once you apply the Doppler in it there will be an increased vascularity and the most important and investigation of choice for evaluation of osteoid osteoma is CT. Remember it's not an MRI it's CT scan because CT scan can have a very good depiction of the nidus. It can demonstrate the nidus very well even if it is too small. That is the reason why MRI cannot detect the nidus even if it is a hypo or because the cortex or lytic nidus might may not be detected on MRI. So CT is the investigation of choice. 
and on MRI one more pitfall which you should keep in mind is that because of presence of extensive edema because the osteoastoma causes a lot of surrounding reaction and edema it kind mimic as an aggressive pathology so keep in mind CT is the investigation of choice for the osteoastoma and just to remember in nuclear medicine once the bone scan is done uh, the classic sign of osteoastoma is the double density sign thank you all